G'day, welcome back. Um, you'll notice a bit of a different camera angle today. The camera's where the Golf used to be, so it's pretty cool it's not in here now. And yeah, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the electrical differences between the automatic Golf VR6 and the manual Golf VR6. Uh, now my car is a 1998, quite a late one, Japanese market automatic VR6. That's now a manual VR6. And uh, now there's quite a few a couple of little electrical changes I had to make to get the key to work, to get the reverse lights to work, and a couple of bits of information that kind of steered me a little bit wrong from the internet, believe it or not. So, so what are the differences? Yeah, so the automatic version's got a park neutral safety switch. Uh, obviously the manual car doesn't. I know in the US especially, uh, you seem to have a clutch pedal switch that interrupts the starter rest of the world we don't have that let's get in turn the key we're away uh, the reverse lights obviously you select reverse in your auto turns the reverse lights on you got to sort that out in manual too and yeah we'll start with that uh, so those two two items reverse lights starter controlled by this relay here this is a 175 relay on the OBD2 uh, if you read the Bentley manual, read a lot of the guides online, they talk about a 150 relay. Like in the OBD1 cars, the older cars, they had a 150 relay instead of 175 relay. So that's the first thing that threw me. I was looking for the wrong relay. And the second thing that threw me was this isn't located in the same place as the 150 relay. I'll show you the picture of the Bentley where that should be. In fact, it's a few spaces across. And if you're familiar with a Mark III Golf relay panel, you can't really get your hand, you can't see what's going on. No way up there, you've got to get the whole fuse box out and see what's going on. So that's that one. So this relay, see it's a wee bit complicated there. Uh, it seems we've got three, three power circuits, a few control circuits. Um, one of these is for the starter. So you can put 12 volts to the red and black wire turn the starter. And there's also a blue and blue and black circuit and that's your reverse lights. So red and black starter, blue and black reverse lights. Now what I've done, uh, I've just taken the red and black wire from the ignition on, well, starting position, just tapped it straight through to the red and black of this. So I just put it on a little spade connector, put it in there, so we just bypass the relay. Um, I've got no issues doing that. The wires are all nice and thick, they're adequately rated. I presume the manual card just doesn't have the relay, just have a straight key to a solenoid power cable, red and black, it starts. Uh, reverse lights are a little bit more complicated. <coughs> and so I'm not too sure on the mechanism in the automatic transmission how it does that, <coughs> but in the manual transmission there's a switch uh, when you put the car into reverse a dial a little what's the opposite of an indent a salient point spins around activates the switch <coughs> uh, so what I've done again from this relay two black and black and blue wires I've run them into the cap into the um, engine bay to that switch on the gearbox put it in reverse it activates the lights too easy a lot of, if you read the guides online, people are running wires back to the clusters and doing all weird stuff. This is the source of all your headaches and solutions. So yeah, that's what we did there. Uh, what else did we read online that may or may not have been true? Uh, tachometer. Works fine. I didn't have to do anything special. <coughs> My tachometer just works. Um, speedometer that's the other thing people said oh it just doesn't work you've got to tap wires and do all this kind of stuff no you've got the two pin plug that goes to the differential speedometer works fine so maybe um, different markets different versions OBD1 OBD2 things are different but for me that's what worked uh, what else are we going to talk about so information sources yeah Google a lot of the information is pretty old a lot very little of it related to my particular car, which is why we're making the video. Uh, the Bentley manual, that seems to only 
Well, my Bentley manual refers to the OBD1 card, the 94-95 US market cars. Um, seems to be quite different to what I've got. <coughs> uh, so what other changes did I make to uh, facilitate auto to manual? Well, there's a uh, automatic gearbox ECU under the rear seat. We've unplugged that. Don't need it. Job done. Uh, I've also reprogrammed the ECU. I don't know if I needed to do this. I've just changed the coding from ending in a one to ending in a zero, which is the difference between automatic and manual. Uh, we've bypassed this as we've spoken about uh, for the starter switch and the reverse lights. That's about it, really. Um, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, but yeah, if you read the guides online, a lot of them are missing the pictures. Um, they're old links, the pictures don't work. And it's bum. Uh, so yeah. Turned out to be pretty simple. You've got one wire that comes from your key starting switch, plugs into that red and black wire on the relay holder. You've got black and blue that run out to the reverse light switch. Unplug your automatic transmission ECU, job done. And there we go, nice and simple, just thought I'd run through that. Um, obviously, Mark Free Golf, there's a bit of technology in there, but it's still all relay based, there's not too much to do with ECUs or whatever else. You just unplug the auto one, sort out your wires, no way, that's great. So there we go, hope that's useful to someone. Uh, but yeah, so say, that's, this is my experience. Judging by the guides online, yours might be completely different, but that's what I did. Works for me. Job done. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.